So, let me start by saying this. So, Darwin OP is officially a NSF National Science Foundation supported research and development project. Uh, uh, I'm the PI from Virginia Tech, and also we're working with uh, Purdue University and University of Pennsylvania and the company Robotics, who's actually building and selling. So, we're going to talk about all the details uh, today. So, I think it's very important. Uh, by the way, let's keep the door open. I think that's a good, good idea to keep the door open so people can sneak in. That's too good. Yeah. So, <clears throat> I think it's uh, interesting and important to understand the history of the development of Darwin. So Darwin uh, started in actually 2004 at Virginia Tech. So I've been very interested in human locomotion, so I thought that the best way to learn about human locomotion is try to build a miniature human robot and try to make it walk. By the way, Darwin stands for Dynamic Anthropomorphic Robot with Intelligence. So in 2004, at the time, and these days you can buy small toy, you know, a hobbyist, a human -like robot. At that time, it's very rare. So we wanted to do some initial uh, uh, a feasibility study of if, is it even possible. What is it? Sound is not coming in? You have to turn it on. Okay. Very good. So we had to do an initial a feasibility study. What kind of motors can we use? What kind of controllers can we use? So we decided to use Robotis' uh, dynamics motor, and this was an early uh, robot called Cycloid, and we tried to uh, come up with different software. So as you know, this one does not have any uh, sensors, no feedback, and as you know, if there's no feedback and there's any third services, then you know what happens. Something like this. We all so, however, with this success, uh, we decided to go with it. So, in 2000, uh, the following in 2005, we started doing the, the official, the real design, starting from the kinematics, uh, all the detailed design, FEM analysis, and this is what it came up with, Darwin 1. This was in 2005. Uh, so, the software we use, LabVIEW Real Time. Uh, so, the graduate students work on the ZMP based walking gates. Most of the undergraduate students work on the design and fabrication of the robot. And Darwin one finally uh, can stand up and walk in 2005. So again, uh, at the time, this was very impressive and it was something very new. It's going to walk. It also walks with a little bit of like a straight knee to kind of walk in motion that we call But notice that it still has a tether, so it's still off core computing and off core power. As you know, weight is a big, big issue. But with this success, in 2006, the following year, uh, we decided to now, it was time to add sensors, computing equipment, and make it smart so it can do real research. So Darwin 2A 2006 now has two firewire cameras, IMU, six rate gyros, uh, uh, accelerometers, four torque sensors on the foot, lithium polymer batteries, 1.4 uh, gigahertz Pentium M chip on board. Give all the sensors it needs, all the computing power it needs so it can actually use it for research. So now if you move an object in front of its head, the camera can track the object. Uh, this video over here is the view from Darwin when it's walking. So the reason why I shake it was it walks like Frankenstein like this. And it tries to locate this orange one and put a blue dot. So this was Darwin 2A. As you probably know, uh, there's a competition called RoboCup, Autonomous Robot Soccer Competition. So in very short amount of time, Bryce has put together a fully autonomous robot soccer playing program. It's not remote controlled, there's no tethers. Just by the vision and trying to do localization and trying to keep the ball in the hole. And this was our assignment from the students. So with this, we were the very first team in the United States to qualify for the humanoid RoboCup, uh, uh, RoboCup the humanoid division in 2006. So we use this for many things. Oh, buddy, this is when uh, Discovery Channel came to film the robot. It's been on all different UCN and things like that. But as you know, the, the Murphy's Law, whenever there's a camera, it always fails. So if you saw it on TV, you probably saw it missing the whole thing. All right. So this is the next version of Darwin 4. Much faster, much stronger. It has a mechanical ability to run, and it's trying to show some cool moves that's doing really like Jackie Chan and you know, martial arts kind of thing, and it walks away. So with this success, uh, so we've been participating in RoboCup since 2007. So this, these are some photos from the, uh, the RoboCup. So in case you don't know about RoboCup, RoboCup, as I mentioned, is the International Autonomous Robot Soccer Competition with the goal of, by the year 2050, we want to have full-size <coughs> humanoid robots play soccer against the World Cup 
human champions and win. So towards that goal, they're upping the rules and we're going towards that goal. So this is in 2007, the first time we uh, entered in uh, Robo Cup with our Darwin series robots. Uh, Darwin 2A and Darwin 2B against one of the Japanese road over there. Uh, this is in uh, China, Sucho, China in 2008, uh, playing soccer, Hanwha soccer. Uh, this is a beautiful Louis Vuitton Cup trophy that we plan to get next year. This is what you get when you get the, the uh, best human labor robot. And I believe that Darwin OP will be able to bring this to the United States. Everything is cool. Alright, so just to give you an idea of the role of you've probably seen a lot of uh, uh, movie clips, but the next is a really uh, impressive uh, uh, research event. All the stuff with automation, autonomous behavior, dynamics and control, evolution. It's really a research event packed in a more entertaining, exciting, supporting event. So everything, this is down to our robot, you can see the digital track in real time, that's Darn over there. So the latest version of the Darwin is actually Darwin 4. We actually brought Darwin 4. Oh, we bought here. This was uh, this is Darwin 3. We developed in 2007, 6, 2007. And this is the latest Darwin 4. It's really, really fast, strong. It's also very heavy, but it's a very capable, high-performance robot. So that's Darwin 4 over there. And the performance of this is remarkable. Uh, we also use this for many outreach programs, as you know, we all experience. Whenever we do many robots, the kids love them. So whenever we do these demos, the kids actually think these robots are live, and they actually try to talk to them and they interact. Uh, so we use this a lot of these demos for uh, uh, outreach activities. Uh, another project uh, related to the Darwin project is the Mini Hugo project. It's, all, it's also an NSM National Science Foundation pro, uh, funded project called Pyre. They actually have a Pyre workshop upstairs on the sixth floor. If you have time, you want to check it out. So this is another robot that we built. Uh, uh, so you, everybody knows Hugo from Korea Heights. So this is a miniature version of that, and we try to make it an open hardware platform, meaning that all the CAD files and drawings and everything is available online. So anybody can make it. And we did an experiment. So the Drexel University students actually, uh, without any communication with us, they build a full mini Hugo just based on our instruction and CAD files. And you can see the performance of the mini Hugo. So, also we use this, oh by the way, uh, two years ago, the Roanoke Symphony Orchestra uh, uh, stopped by campus and uh, during the Christmas, uh, you know, the, the uh, holiday concert. And guess who the guest conductor was? Darwin actually conducted the orchestra. So you can see a lot of possibilities of using it for many different type of uh, uh, outreach and also for research. So we've been getting so many emails, phone calls, letters from people from all around the world, research laboratories, universities, they showed interest in this uh, human labor robot platform, Darwin, because it's very capable. Uh, so as I mentioned, I, we did a quick, you know, uh, uh, unofficial survey right now, right before the, uh, the, uh, the session. A lot of people use different type of robots. Uh, Aldebaran now, uh, no, Robonova, uh, what was the, pro the robot that you talked about? The, uh, the Bioloid. Okay. The Bioloid, and there's another one, you know, so there's some of them. But uh, we, we try to get a lot of feedback from these uh, human robot users. I try to create the, the best human robot for research, education, and outreach. So with that uh, goal, uh, I wrote a, uh, a research proposal with uh, uh, Purdue University and some of it. Oh, by the way, so. Uh, Darwin's been on the cover of many magazines. This is just some of the, uh, the latest. Uh, this was a little old one, but this is uh, was it like two months ago. It was on the cover of the Robot magazine. So we wrote up a proposal to NSF to develop a fully open source miniature human robot for research, outreach, and education. Uh, two versions, Darwin HP and Darwin uh, LC, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. And we have uh, uh, 20 something, 26 uh, partner universities. And we decided to build 20 something units and give it to them for free so they can use it for research outreach activities. And every year we're going to have a workshop, get feedback from them. Uh, they're going to use it for many different tasks, which I'm going to also talk about later, uh, and then improve this. But the really important thing is we want to form a user community of the Darwin robots by making it open source. We're going to talk more about all those things in detail. So at Virginia Tech, we use these robots for many different types of education activities. Uh, vision, autonomous behaviors, kinematics, human-robot interaction, dynamics and control, uh, design. So we use these for a lot of things. So we know that this is a really good platform for doing these kind of things. So as I mentioned, we're developing two robots. One is called Darwin HP. HP stands for high performance. 
HP is actually based on our Darwin 4 robot. Unfortunately, this is not going to be open source. Okay, this is we're going to only make like six units and distribute to some research universities that can act, they plan to, they need this platform for some kind of high performance locomotion uh, task. But the more exciting part is the Darwin LC. LC stands for low cost, and this was supposed to be based on our. Mini Hubo project, which was also an SS sponsored project for the Pyre project. However, while doing that, we actually decided that we should really start from scratch because Mini Hubo, though it's very capable, it was constrained by it had to be a miniature version of Hubo. But we found out that by starting from scratch, it can improve in so many different ways. So it scratched the idea of using Mini Hubo and it designed a completely new Hubo, uh, robot. And the performance turned out to be fantastic. So if you call it LC, we thought it's sort of misleading. So we changed the name to Darwin OP. And OP stands for Open Platform. So now we have Darwin HP and OP. Now, unofficially, Darwin OP actually performs much better than Darwin HP at this point, at this point. But HP has a, a, a lot of other advantages as well. So today, in this workshop, we're going to talk about Darwin OP. So what's the goal of Darwin OP? Again, throughout the day, we're going to talk more in detail. Uh, but first of all, the most important thing we thought it has to have a very high load carrying capacity. Because if you really want to use this for research, you want to have different cameras, you have, want to have another uh, processing board, different type of sensors, you might want to make it carry different objects to do some manipulation. So one of the goals is to have it can carry an extra load. Most of the robots that's on the market, if you put another camera on it, it's right at the design threshold. It cannot walk. But this one, darn OP, can. Uh, ample compu computational power. Some other competitive robots or uh, you know, on the market, some of them with the same philosophy uh, as uh, Darwin, they have very limited computing power. Some of them max with like 500 megahertz, you know, something chip. But our robot, as we'll talk about more, we have a 1.6 gigahertz uh, atom chip. And we have ample power. And this was also from feedback from uh, other uh, users, especially from the Rope Club, that they want to uh, you know, use this for uh, uh, implementing uh, some sophisticated vision algorithm and uh, autonomous behavior. So uh, ample computing power. Good and useful sensors right out of the box. We're going to talk more in detail, but uh, it has a really nice HD camera. It has 6-axis IME rate gyros uh, uh, accelerometers. And also has a microphone, a, a two microphones and a speaker. Some people want to use this for you know, sound source localization. Another, another, another university is going to use for linguistics, trying to you know, communicate. Use Darwin as you know, understand how to make the, the computers understand you know, uh, human speech and those kind of things. I, high performance. This is important for many things, but mainly this is for the com com competition, competitive uh, events. RoboCup being RoboCup. I, the, the reason why I'm so excited is because I truly believe Darwin OP is the highest performing human robot of its class. It's awesome. You probably see it walking. Oops, you probably see it walking uh, downstairs uh, uh, on the carpet yesterday. But this carpet, this is really plush. Uh, not a lot of robots can actually walk on a carpet like this. Uh, sorry, but even Biolog might have difficulty walking on this carpet, right? Yeah. So. A lot of other robots, they can't even walk, but Darn OP can easily walk on this. And as we'll see some of the demonstration and the video clips, if it's on a hard, smooth, smooth surface, it's walking, it's awesome. You're going to see it. Expandability, which is also important. So we want people to hack this, modify it, add things to it, uh, take out the hand, develop a gripper, put it on. Uh, put another camera on, on the head, and also robotists, uh, you know, as we talk about, they're going to also sell additional parts like robot grippers, but we want you to hack it, modify it, add more stuff. Because you can, it has enough high load carrying capacity, you can't do what you want. Uh, open source ha software hardware. This we're going to talk about in more slides, but again, the idea is make everything open. So everyone can share and you can contribute. I'll talk about that one in the next, next slide. Affordable. Now, of course, these are expensive. These are not toys. These are research tools and educate. So, but we try to make it as affordable as possible. We believe that it's much more, uh, 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 much more competitive than any any of the other uh, platforms out there. Uh, easy maintenance. You know, it breaks. Everything breaks. So if it breaks, you don't have to send it to the company or send it to us. But you can assemble it easily. Disassemble it. Change up the parts. If a part breaks because it's open source hardware, you can make your own replacement part and put it in, or you can buy that broken part from the company, Robotis, and just replace it. So it's very, very easy maintenance. This is another really, really important and uh, important strength of Darwin OP. 
Uh, also, as I mentioned, we want to form a community of users. So, at the beginning, uh, at the beginning of next year, we're already going to have you know twenty something uh, Darwin OP platforms used in various universities out there. So we're going to start with that. But uh, I we believe that a lot of other uh, you know robot hobbyists or different universities will be start making this, and we want them to contribute software hardware wise to the. Uh, 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 SourceForge website, right? That's going to be the main website for collecting all this data. And of course, we want to have fun with this because <coughs> it's cool, right? So for the NSF uh, uh, project, these are our partner universities. Uh, it's a mixture of research universities, user universities, undergraduate-only universities, uh, women-only universities. So we want to really diver diversify it. So I believe that we're building nine HP units and 26 OP units and this unit initially. And they have all different... Uh, 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 the plans for using these for many different types of uh, research and education activities. And again, they're going to give us feedback about how to improve the Darwin OP, and based on that, we're going to update the CAD files and all those kind of things. Uh, so, well, let's talk about briefly about open platform. What do we mean by open source, open source hardware and open source software? So again, the idea is we want uh, anybody to be able to make it. So, you don't have to buy it from robots. You don't have to. You can make your own. But again, of course, the actuators, you have to buy it from this company because this company makes it. But if you want to make it, you can make it your own. If you want to buy it, you can buy the whole thing from the company. If you want to build it, but some of the parts are difficult to make, you can just buy those parts and build your own. Uh, you, you like building stuff, Michael. Like you, 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 you've already built a bioloid, uh, the, the uh, Darwin OP head for your bioloid. Right? Yeah, you I think like you use the 3D printer. Yeah, yeah. So, you might be interested in actually building one of these based on our instructions because I know you're, you're like these kind of things. So that's the idea. So what's open? Uh, so in terms of mechanics, the full 2D and 3D CAD files will be available on the uh, SourceForge net. So you can download it. And based on that, again, the reason why I'm giving you the CAD data is we want you to also modify that, hack it, and create your own different things. Uh, fabrication manuals. We're going to talk that at the end of today's tutorial. We're going to provide all the detailed manuals of how to actually fabricate it, starting from setting up your CNC machine. Uh, if you're going to use a laser cutter, how to use this, and how to bend the materials and those kind of things. And we do have experience doing th this from uh, the, the Mini Hugo prior project that I talked about. Uh, detailed assembly diagram, the disassembly diagram, it's important for you to maintenance. Uh, assemblies have fixed things and mod it, so we're going to provide all those things. Uh, and also a maintenance guide. In terms of electronics, the main piece, so another important thing about this, it's a PC base. It's not a proprietary something or microcontroller. It does have a microcontroller, but it has a generic PC. So we're going to talk more about that in the software section, but you can run Linux, Windows. We're also planning to do LabVIEW, LabVIEW real-time, MATLAB, ROS, ROS, and anything goes. And again, today in the afternoon uh, uh, tutorial, uh, so when you, if you buy this from robots, it's going to come with a set of software. But in the afternoon, we're going to give you an example of how you can create their own software code and use that instead of the, 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 the code that came up, that came with the, the, the Darn OP as an example. So, uh, yeah, so the main PC, that's a, a commercial product, so all the specs are available. Uh, all the sub microcontroller boards, schematics are going to give, provide all the wire structure. All the firmware, source code, protocol are going to be all open. You can download it, you can, you can change it if you want. You can, uh, uh, re uh, flash the, the microcontroller board and do whatever they want to, right? So, and software development environment framework, uh, all the PC programs that uh, the uh, we do, uh, the robot is developed is going to be open. And of course, the source for side. If you any school or university or you know people develop core code, the idea is to form a community and share it. So all of this is going to be open. Now. The PC itself is a commercial part, so we don't deal with it. Robotics, you know, they, they actually buy it from the company. So uh, the, the PC itself is, you know, whatever the, that particular company, uh, Fit PC, right? Yes. Fit PC, whatever that company provides is going to be open. Uh, the camera on it is a nice USB based high definition mm -hmm. camera, but that's also something that we did not develop. That's, we purchased it, so whatever mm -hmm. that company provides, that's going to be what's going to be provided. And the dynamics motor is an actual product from the robot, so that's going to be an uh, uh, end product that's you know, being supported as that uh, uh, motor, I believe. OK, so with that, that was a quick introduction. So we started at 9 o'clock. That was the history of the development of Darwin and then some of the scope of the project. So starting now today, we're going to talk about from the company Robotics who's going to be building this uh, uh, robot. They're going to talk about 
Uh, the, pres the CEO uh, uh, from Robux Pilgrim is going to talk about the general specifications and he's going to be announcing about the cost and those kind of things. But I am not involved with any business. I don't get a single cent every time they sell Robux. I should have made a deal. I should get like 1% everything with them. So I have no uh, I know financial aid ties with them. So uh, they're, they're going to announce all the, uh, the cost and availability and the really schedule. I'm going to show some really neat demonstrations today. And after that, uh, JK from Virginia Tech, uh, one of the you know, uh, uh, mechanical designers, uh, he's going to talk about the assembly, disassembly, maintenance, and uh, those kind of things. And after the break, lunch, of course, we have a planetary talk by uh, uh, Mark Raber today. That's going to be exciting. And in the afternoon, uh, Mr. Ha from Waters, uh, the vice president, he's going to talk about the electronic sensors and all those kind of things. And after the whole afternoon is dedicated to some hands-on fun programming examples uh, of the software that UPenn has developed, which has been very, very successful, which is also going to be all open source on the internet. So you can use this as a template and create your own code. So that's today's schedule. Of course, I'm going to close it by talking about the, uh, 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 the fabrication, the open hardware, and the mechanical part a little bit. Okay, so that's a quick introduction. Before we invite uh, uh, the President and CEO, any questions we have about uh, the NSF project that we have? I'm sure you guys have a lot of questions.